Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel. I tell you immediately, it was a real nightmare to structure the video today. I took so many time to decide which topic to first speak about, because there are so many topics to speak about in this morning. Timothy, which one? Castagne or Wea? Well, both of them, but especially Wea, that is that close to sign for Juve. I'm asking myself, what is the goal of signing Wea? 4-3-3, 3-5-2, again, maybe both of them during the season during the same game so i have my big question we will analyze and deep diving but then i will take you back to 2020 when we were already speaking about thomas party because he's back on the front pages and then guys if you were waiting for a moment to be scared seeing your favorite player federico chiesa leaving juve i'm not saying that it's official but attenzione because voices from the premier league are going after tonali also on federico chiesa so many topics to talk about ragazzi i wanted to start with the light news zinedine zidane no i'm not announcing you that he will become the coach of 23 24 but just telling him best wishes because it's his birthday and ragazzi if you didn't see and watch juventus playing with zidane back then go back on youtube what a phenomenal that guy was a fantastic guy and i'm super lucky that i watched him will he become one day the coach of juventus probably but probably not in 23 24 because in the video i will tell you a reason why i don't believe that we will change coach for the start of the season but anyway then before speaking about all the things that happened around juventus let me say again thank you because you're just fantastic yesterday i told you we were in a five day streak today we reached six day streak of the maximum of likes 656 likes for the video of yesterday as we speak we are missing 13 Juventini to reach 26k. Can we reach 7 consecutive days of minimum 500 likes? Depending on you. So do it and continue to subscribe. We go to a sad news. I told you when we are speaking about Juve, we have to speak about on the field, about Mercato, but also off the field. Yesterday, big strange news. Because on the official site of UEFA, Juventus logo disappeared in the participant teams of the Conference League. Everyone was strangely asking themselves questions, all the journalists, what is happening? A few hours later, I checked again and Juventus popped up. So the screenshots are real eh? because I verified there was no there Juventus and then they were there again. Guys, was it a simple human mistake that always can happen with this really strange casualty that the only team that was missing was Juventus, all the other teams were there? Or was it already a spoiler that Juventus will not be there in the Conference League? Well, today on Tutospor, they are maybe telling us that Juventus will not participate to Conference League. Why? Because today there is a meeting in Nyon with Juventus management and the members of UEFA. Tutospor is saying UEFA, Juve, aria di patto. It smells like a new deal. What could that deal be that Juventus is refusing to participate to the Conference League? Do you remember I told you you are not obliged to participate to the conference invitation. You can also refuse. So Juventus refusing to participate. It's like a non-said ban for one year and after that you can start continuing if you were hoping to see Juventus playing that conference league and trying to win all the possible trophies in the world as the first ever team well it will probably not be next year will it happen is it official not yet but we will have to monitor that when I was telling you that Zidane will probably not be the coach of 23-24. It's not because Juntoli will arrive in a few days. We are just waiting for the confirmation that Juntoli has been set free and all the journalists are saying that we are just missing a few hours. The thumbnail is ready. But it's because Magnanelli from Sassuolo, ex Bandiera, he played with the number four and that number four has been taken away from Sassuolo because he was really a legend, was already in the technical staff of Sassuolo, he received a proposition, an offer from Max Allegri to join him to replace Paolo Bianco. He took a few days of thinking time and looks like he arrived to the decision to accept it. Ragazzi, I'm sure that before Magnanelli agreed to join Allegri staff, he wanted a bit of reassurance. Will he coach in Italy, in Torino, Juventus? or will he go to Saudi Arabia or whatever. So I think that we will really go to uh, Max Allegri that will stay at Juve. Then, if tomorrow in July, when Juntoli will arrive and he will decide totally otherwise, we don't know. So there is still that 0.1 that is saying that Max Allegri could maybe leave Juventus, but don't hope too much at the moment. Now, entering all the other news, Gazzetta dello Sport is speaking about 
derby totale fratesi between Inter and Milan. I will give you a 13 that is still there because we heard the words of fratesi. But first, let me go back to scandalo, a real scandal, because yesterday I watched France under 21 winning 2-1 over Italy under 21. I was really interested not only in Gli Azzurri, the little uh, Italian team, but also in French team because I was observing a lot of players. I was again super impressed by Kefren Turam, what a player, and then Cherki, mamma mia. But it's not, it's not a surprise, we know these players. Remember when I told you that Juventus was on four players from Ligue 1? We were speaking about Wea, about Cherki, about Turam and about Mikao Latze, or I don't, uh, I don't know the name. Anyway, these four players, well, these two, I was observing them yesterday. Mamma mia, they were great. But also Wahi that entered, he didn't receive a lot of playing time anyway. Miretti missed again a goal, a possible 2-2. Played well, eh? played really well when he entered. Rovella, fantastic. Much better than Rovella, uh, than Tonali. I hope that Newcastle was not watching. Newcastle, they told me that I don't have to pronounce the T. I hope that Newcastle was not watching because Rovella was fantastic yesterday. The coach swept him out at a certain moment. I didn't understand. But anyway, the real scandal was something else. The real scandal was that the 2-1 victory of France, three huge mistakes that totally influenced the loss of Italy. Because on the 1-1, there was a clear penalty to benefit for Italy, not seen. I remember you, there is no VAR in the tournament, a disgrace. How is it possible that in 2023, in a big, huge tournament like that, there is no VAR? But there is also no goal like technology, because the possible 2-2, that goal that went over the line, nobody saw it, or at least the Italian people saw it, not the referee and not the French people. Really, really, really strange. And then on the goal of the temporary 2-1 of France, there was a big huge fall on an Italian player that nobody saw. Guys, a total disaster, it broke my heart sincerely for the kids. On the other hand, there was a part of my heart that was smiling, because I remember the words of the president of Federazione Italiana Gioco Calcio speaking about Juve Salernitana, when he said they saw it, the referee saw it, that unfortunate event, but it turned out to be a mistake. But nobody was wrong. Do you remember these words? And also when he was saying, let's all calm down. We will not scream to a scandal after match day six of Serie A. Let's go back to our ranks. Let's all be serene. I don't know what he was thinking yesterday after that goal, after that game, after that first game of the Euro, that opening game. Anyway, I told you interesting players that uh, were playing. I will continue to watch the tournament. But going back to Sassuolo from Magnanelli, to Fratesi, because Sassuolo, yesterday apparently the Sassuolo player told us that he already chose his team, he knows which team he want to choose, he already said to his agent, inform me, really at the end, I'm a bit stressed, but I'm focusing on my holidays now, but I already chose my team. He's speaking, when he's speaking, looks like he's speaking a bit more to the Inter side, because he said I chose my team, and I'm sure my man manager will find a way to accommodate me. UCL, I would like to play it, but the project matters more, just as it doesn't change going to a team ready to win or to rebuild. Attenzione, because he was speaking in a way of playing with Bar uh, Barella and so on and so on. I think that he's really hoping to go to Juve. Until the end, he wants to go to Juve, but of course, I believe that Juventus is giving up on Fratesi. Why? Because after the sale of Tonali, Milan will cash in the price of uh, Fratesi will go up at at least 40 million euros. If it was 35, it became 40 million euros. So attenzione, I believe for the Fratesi fans, give up on him. Even to Davide, give up on your wishes to go to Juve because I believe that Juve will go somewhere else. He was speaking about a project, and this is where we are coming in the moment of the video, where I am scared. When I told you a few days ago that I was happy, then other days I was not happy, then I was happy because I saw some project, I saw a clear way of going to a 4 3, -three. Today, speaking about project, I'm a bit scared because Corriere dello Sport is saying Juve e Thomas, Thomas Party, a deal of 80 million euro. He already said yes. Attenzione. Attenzione, because I remember in 2020, and I have the screenshot of that video that I made on the 3rd of June 2020, I was already speaking about Juve Zagnolo. I was already speaking about Juve 
Thomas Party. Thomas Party could be forced to choose between Arsenal and Juve this summer. At the end, he chose for Arsenal, but he refused now, with one more year of contract to Arsenal, he refused the big offer from Saudi Arabia because his preference is Juve. Ragazzi, the good thing is I don't have to study him anymore because I already studied him three years ago. I know everything from the midfielder. Now, will Juventus go for it or not? If we are speaking about project, the project that Fratesi was waiting for or asking for, I don't believe that Thomas Party is a project. He's 30 years old. It's a player that, after Atletico Madrid at Arsenal, played some good games, but I didn't see that big evolution of Thomas Party. On the other side, he's also earning 10 million euro. Of course, you have the benefit of the tax because he's a foreign player, but it's still too high. He will have to reduce his salary. Looks like Juventus, they already found an agreement kind of with him. Then Mirko Di Natale is telling me, no, Beppe, Arsenal and Juve, they didn't start speaking. At the moment, it's just rumors because Allegri loved the players years ago because he has one more year of contract. There is nothing really concrete. I hope so. Not that I'm totally against him, but if he joins Juventus, that means that Rabiot, ciao, ciao. And the salary of Rabiot, is switched to Thomas Party. I don't believe that Thomas Party is the player that Juventus need at the moment. How will Juventus look like with Thomas Party? Well, he will be that defensive regista, but not the brain of the team. A real regista defensively to block everything, to actually unlock Locatelli being a mezzala. But like that, you're sacrificing maybe a Fagiolo. Because Pogba would play. Pogba, Locatelli, Thomas Party really physical centimeters muscles but no fagioli and i'm a bit doubtful about the thomas party joining juve guys that's what i tell you anyway yesterday fabrizio confirmed it eh? he said that uh, juventus is really interested and that he is at the moment refusing the offers one thing is sure zakaria is about to leave two offers from the premier league where he wants to stay bournemouth not really serious at the moment but they are asking he's not really eager to go there but then there is a big one West Ham that is offering near to 80 million euro for Zakaria. Guys, I tell you, if really you need a player, physical, big, tall and so on, even if they are a bit different, go and keep Zakaria instead of going for Thomas Party, especially with the salary of these two players. But anyway, looks like he will remain in um, Premier League and that Juventus doesn't want to go for him. Now we go to the topic that I told you we can fear a bit. La Premier, la Premier piglia tutto, guarda anche in casa Juve, chiesa nel mirino. If yesterday I spoke about the end of calcio, the end of Serie A, the officiality of becoming a feeder league, well Juventus is playing in a league that at the moment is second tier. It's not a first tier league anymore, this is a certainty. But that tier can be lowered because instead of being a tier 2, it can become a tier 3. If you are seeing that your best Italian players are leaving, yesterday it was Tonali, today it can be Federico Chiesa. After Vicario going to Tottenham, there is Federico Chiesa. I'm not telling you that he will leave for sure, but more the days are going, more it looks like the decision between the big player to be sacrificed is not anymore Dusan Vlaovic, but it's Federico Chiesa, because he has a lot of offers. Paris Saint-Germain, Bayern Munich, but especially the one of Premier League, we are speaking about two big teams, Newcastle and Liverpool. Both of the teams are on the player, with Liverpool having the possibility without any problem to offer him the salary request of 8 million euro, which Juventus can't give him. Liverpool, they have no problem. Liverpool, they want to spend for him 40 million euro. Juventus is asking at least 60 million euro. Ragazzi, at the moment, Chiesa, it's not an obligation that he wants to leave. He says, I'm open to everything, staying at Juve, leaving Juve. He has some offers. If he really wanted, he was already gone. He's waiting for Juventus to speak with his manager, to take a decision. But it's a difficult one. I believe that never we have been so close to see the number seven leaving Juve. Guys, tell me about uh, that news. Of course cashing in with Chiesa, keeping Vlaovic can be an alternative to rebuild the team. If you are telling me Thomas is one of the alternatives, I'm not happy. If you are giving me other names like Parisi, for example, you know, rebuilding the team with really functional players, I can think about it. But after Di Maria, losing also one that is giving you 
unpredictability, creativity, intensity, because Chiesa is an intense player, that could be harsh. But anyway, can we really say no to Premier League? Can the players say no to Premier League? If we spoke about exit now, after 15 minutes of the video, we can finally speak about entries. Timothy Wea is the big name. Wea vede bianco nero. Wea is watching, is seeing closer and closer the black and white colors. Remember, I told you his father, legend of Milan, has always been a Juventino. Well, he couldn't play at Juve, but maybe his son can, because yesterday Di Marzo went out with the big news. We are nearly done. We'll go into details. I showed you two days ago that beautiful image where I said, hey guys, I'm super happy because Juventus is opening their eyes and not only watching in Italy, not sponsoring the teams in Italy, but going in Liga where you have great talents. Cherki. I'm a big fan. Turam, I'm a big fan. Probably cost too much, Turam. I told you about Mikao Dadze. I'm a big fan, even if he's playing in Ligue 2. And then there is Wea. From the four players I told you, I like the three ones on the right side. I'm not a big fan of the one on the left. Not because I don't like Wea. I was his big fan when I was watching the first game of the World Cup with USA, where he scored that goal because I really wanted that he was able to score a goal in the World Cup, a World Cup that his father didn't participate to. Well, Wea to Juve could be a reality. There is nearly an agreement with Lille between the 10 and 12 million euro, could be a 10 plus 2 of bonus for the son of George. Am I excited? Well, when I was watching him <coughs> with USA, I tell you, I was excited. His first game, he was incredible. He's fast, he has that intensity, but then he totally disappeared. And at Lille, I was not really always watching his games, but it's really strange. The first thing that I went, because that's what I do uh, when I hear that the players are that close to you, uh, the first thing I do is going to the injury list before knowing which position, what are his skills, how old he is, I go to the injury list. Ragazzi, here I start to be a bit scared. 1920 at Lille, 25 games that he missed for a muscle injury. Then in 1920, he missed five games. Uh, no, even more. He missed uh, 13 games because of fitness, hamstring injury, and so on and so on. Last season, seven games because of a foot injury. The season before, 10 games missed because of muscle injury, thigh problems. Ragazzi. If we know that we have already fitness problem, is that the player that is giving me confidence? No. Then I try to look over the injuries and maybe I'm telling, okay, maybe he's feeling better. Now let's deep dive. Well, 23 years old. Is he really 17? No, he's 23. Is he old? No, he's 23. Born in 2000, USA player. He has different citizenships, but he's a player that can also play in Europe. So without problems, we should not have a problem there. Right foot player. And then I watching he's playing as a striker and as a right wing. These are the, the the heat maps, or at least where he's playing on sofa score. But I remember that he was also playing other position. So heat map of the season is playing totally on the wings, not as a striker. What is the real position of Timothy Wea? Well, we asked transfer market this season. He played everywhere. He played as a left back. He plays as a right back. He plays as a right wing. He's played one time as a striker. What is his positioning? And that's where I tell you. Ragazzi, if we are looking for a project, what is the project of Timothy Wea? A player that is a bit injury prone, a player that is not scoring a lot of goals, a player that at the moment has no real position. Yes, I like his intensity. Yes, I see potential in him. Yes, it's a deal that is not really expensive and the salary can be under control. But is he the player that today is reassuring me? I don't know. You know, when I tell you, we are going 100% for a 4-3-3. Well, a player like Wea is telling me, Beppe, he can be the replacement of Quadrado. A player that can play in a 4-3-3 as a right wing, can play in a 4-3-3 as a right back, can occasionally play on the left, but is also a player that can play in a 3-5-2 doing up and down, up and down, spending so many energy and losing that intensity. I don't want that next year we are going again towards not knowing if we play a 4-3-3 or a 3 5 2. I'm really scared about that. I'm really, really scared about that, ragazzi. Then, if you're bringing me Parisi and you tell me we play a 4-3-3 with Timothy Castagne, because Timothy Wea is not excluding Castagne. Castagne on the right, 
we have uh, Parisi on the left and Wea is meant to again use his offensive power up front, I can maybe agree with it. I know the intensity, I know the potential of the player. But at the moment, is he a player that is uh, making me really hot? I'm doubtful. Anyway, long video, too long video. I will put a, some timestamp so that you are sure that you can go immediately to the to the minute you like. So, ragazzi, thank you for the likes, thank you for subscribing. Hopefully, we can reach 26 today. Grazie, forza. You, vet.